Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Hillcrest Online Cafe. Today, I do have my coffee, so <laughs> uh, it's a winter winter's blend. Because it actually, there's a little bit of snow that came out today. I figured um, it was Marley's, uh, Marley's wedding in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a storm surge. Tonight's her, her bridal shower, so her wedding shower, so it would make sense. It would have a snowstorm of some sort. <laughs> But tonight we're uh, we're going to be interviewing Brad K. Uh, Brad is the chair of our CE team, our Christian education team. So that's our youth and children and educating adults in our church. Uh, we'll all, he's also been a former deacon. He's been the chair of the deacon board. Uh, he's been a good friend. He's um, just an all-around great guy with a couple kids and a wonderful wife, and just plugged into what God um, is doing at Hillcrest. So. Uh, I also know that he's been responsible for leaving gifts at people's doors in the last while. <laughs> so I wanted to kind of ask some questions to, to Brad and his family um, just about what's been going on in the pandemic season. And so, Brad, you're a dad of two young kids and husband to one wife, thankfully. And yep. uh, <laughs> all I can handle. <laughs> <laughs> So how has God been showing himself to you and your family, you know, during these crazy days? Uh, well, in a, in a number of ways. Um, and I, I think the number one way um, that he's used for us is um, it's pretty consistent with how it's been for most of my life, which is that he's been showing himself to me through his people. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, we early on in this started getting phone calls and messages from people just to, uh, asking, how are you doing? Are you still working? Um, are you staying safe? Uh, does Julie still have her job? Because she works more with the public, um, uh, which uh, I know, by the way, <laughs> at the moment she doesn't. Uh, but uh, luckily, the um, uh, unemployment program is being stepped up for, for this, and we'll see... Um, how long that's sustainable, but uh, things are good in that regard. But uh, uh, a lot of people just to kind of sending encouragement and mm -hmm. um, just seeing how um, things are going, even in our Facebook group and the, the Hillcrest Friends and Family Facebook group, yeah. Yeah. Um, how many people are just kind of reaching out to each other and um, making sure people are okay, putting some you know, there's a great mix of stuff in there of like, here's something just for fun. I think I've put a little bit of Babylon B in there um, and uh, uh, stuff that's more serious and, and uh, really good communication and uh, just everyone showing how interested they are in remaining connected uh, has been a real encouragement. And um, uh one of the early signs to me that things were going to be okay, and, and uh, Andrew didn't pay me to say this for anybody watching, it was I uh, I called Andrew. I don't even remember what it what the call was about, um, but it I said something about you know uh, we about us figuring out how to how to proceed while this is all going on, mm. and I just. Um, if I were to picture brand new out of seminary, Andrew, who just got that first youth <laughs> pastor commission and was like how stoked and, and, uh, um, you know, just all worked up, you would have been over that. I, it probably would still be less energetic than it felt like you were on that phone call. Um, because it was, it was as if. You know, um, some people, they run into big problems and they go, oh, geez, what are we going to do? And yeah. other people tend to get uh, like, wow, what an opportunity. And um, the the way you sounded on that call just made me feel, oh, man, like we're in really good hands here. Um, and uh, it it's like, you know, everyone else, you know, you look on Facebook and everyone's posting their jokes about how, they don't wear pants right now and there's no energy and day yeah. and night is the same. And uh, I think there was actually one week where I went out um, a day late to put the garbage out. 
because I forgot what day it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I actually I put it out, and it was like that night when I remembered what day it really was, and I had to go take all the garbage back in. Um, but um, uh, here you were basically just, uh, ah, I can't believe what a great opportunity we're getting here to uh, uh, to do things differently. And um, and I thought, well, that's that's one way to to think of it. But um, I, uh, I that just kind of made me feel like everything was going to be all right. Yeah, I've lost track of what day is what now, but I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm still feeling really good about where things are going. Um, yeah. You know, we just, um, I, I think, you know, not that I think God caused us, but even though God has allowed this situation to happen, he has this wonderful gift of taking a bad situation and turning it into something yeah. great. What have you been doing as a family to love on your neighbors? Because you guys have been doing some interesting things. And we have, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been it, and it's been fun. So the the um, one of the first ideas I had, and it wasn't even my idea. I just kind of um, uh, you probably had seen a post on. I don't remember if I put it in the group or if I just had it generally on my Facebook. But I had uh, put up um, uh, Greg Gutfeld on Fox News talking about uh, things you can do to help seniors who can't go out. And um, and then his group of people that they usually have like a little bit of bickering and fighting because that's their job. That's what. And uh, but um, um, they all just kind of had these ideas. Oh, you can you can go and pick up groceries for someone and leave it at their door with a, a disinfectant wow. wipe or something. And um, so I. I called a few people asking, you know, do you need something? Do you need something? Some of our the seniors from church and everyone that I thought of to call was already taken care of. So uh, that idea was kind of like, oh, well, I, I tried, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, but uh, um, Julie had dug out the sidewalk chalk and uh, we decided to go around and do some uh, driveway tagging. So we knew we wouldn't be able to see anyone, but we could go and write messages on the driveway and the kids would write little pictures and stuff like that. Um, and then um, we, we noticed um, uh, you guys already had uh, some messages for people taking a walk uh, yeah. that you'd put on your own driveway. So we kind of added to that. Yeah. Um, but we, uh, managed to, to hit a few places that night and that was fun. Um, and I think that probably fed into Julie's next idea. Um, yeah. So for for those who don't know yet, um, the uh, who Lynn dubbed the uh, the rock ninjas, that was us. Ah. Um, and uh, at, at first we weren't really trying to get away with doing it secretly. We were just, um, we were kind of going, um, you know, somewhat on the down low because we didn't yeah. know how many people might try to come out and give us a hug and stuff like that. And, and uh, you know, we're actively trying not to kill people right now. So the, uh, <laughs> so we didn't want that. Um, but uh, um, we did that the first night that was, uh, so I, I have an example. I don't, oh. I can't see myself. So here's one of the ones that they had painted and, um, they had a few different designs and we just kind of went around to a few people's houses and, and put them in their gardens or on the yeah. step or whatever So um, who were the painters? Uh, the painters were largely Ruth and uh, Julie. Josh, uh, Josh did some help, um, and uh, in in the interest of quality, I did not do any painting. I was uh, more the driver. Um, and uh, what's that now? I did some of the yeah. I helped with some of the deliveries. Yeah, I was, and I did the driving. Um, but um, yeah, the uh, they were the artists behind it. Um, and uh, it was just basically an idea to show a few people um, that uh, somebody's thinking of you. Hey, and, uh, hey Ruthie. Yeah. <laughs> He's one of the artists now. <laughs> um, yeah, but to show people, you know, someone's thinking of you that, um, 
you're, um, you know, uh, you feel alone, but maybe you're not alone kind of thing. Um, and um, that first night that we did it, I, I think was a Saturday and um, we uh, started noticing people putting up pictures of it on their Facebook um, and they had been uh, pretty happy about it. Um, does something that was fairly simple seem to be bringing like a lot of cheer uh, yeah. to some people. So we just oh, decided yeah. that we uh, had to keep going at it. So um, over the weekend, uh, they painted a bunch more of them. Ruth and I had to go on a mission to get more rocks. Um, and um, funny enough, I, I ended up carrying most of them back. But uh, <laughs> funny how that works. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, we... Um, had all that going on and then in the evenings we'd be going out and doing deliveries um then even going into monday and tuesday i've been working from home so i would be working at my laptop while they're over there uh on the table painting more rocks and then we'd go out and do deliveries um and i lost track of how many we did but it was basically as many hillcresters as we could find uh, addresses for uh plus some family members um the uh, furthest one in one direction was Hampton and the furthest in the other direction was Grand Bay that we had hit. Wow. Um, so we, uh, it, it was a bit of a project and uh, we, um, uh, some people did catch us and they um, either come to the window or, or just to the door. Everybody was well behaved. Nobody ran out and said, let me give you a hug and a kiss. Um, so um, it, uh, it went well, but um everyone that we talked to about it uh was uh pretty touched by it so oh, yeah. uh, it was just one of those kind of it, it was very humbling because you know from our perspective it was um a uh, a simple thing uh but it i I've, I've always found like um even just something like if i'm going through a really hard time and someone says i'm praying for you um oh, yeah you know uh it you know when i was really really sick and someone said i'm praying for you didn't make me stop feeling sick but it did take the loneliness out of the situation it yep. was like um i wasn't fighting this alone so yeah. for a lot of people uh you know being cooped up in their house is is tough um i've i've been having a hard time i'm a homebody but i've had had a hard time with it yeah. um and um you know, just last night when we uh, we needed to, uh, I, I had to go to the pharmacy, and Julie said, "Well, do you want me to go?" And I said, "Absolutely not. I, <laughs> yeah. I want to leave. I want to get out of the house." Yeah. So um, I did the pharmacy run, and it was like the best day of my life, um, <laughs> going to pick up some pills. So yeah, that that was um, that was kind of the end of that project, and I, I've been keeping my eyes peeled for something else to do, just to kind of show people that uh, um, that they're being thought of and to support uh, somebody. But uh, um, at the moment, I'm, I'm I'm just kind of watching for ideas because it's been hard to. Um, I'm I'm not the most creative one or the most thoughtful one. That's usually Julie. Um, so <laughs> she, uh, and, I can't cook. <coughs> and I can't cook for anybody. Can yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And she said, uh, she'd love to cook for someone, but she, she can't do that. Um, <laughs> against the rules. that'd be against the rules, but I suppose, eh? so yeah. what, what's been like, um, here's just an off the wall question. What's it like working at home? Do you find it kind of comforting to be around your family right now? Like, <laughs> um, or just it's, a uh, <laughs> it's it's a mix right um so even uh i've i've had the ability to work from home when i need to for a couple of years now okay. um and it's it's nice to be able to do it um but as i've said to my boss whenever i can i really prefer to be at work because it's easier to focus and easier mm -hmm. to um uh to change uh into work gear <clears throat> um because you know i I'm not right beside my fridge when I'm at work and I'm not right, you know, 
Um, and uh, but I've I've done it before when the kids are sick or something, and um, it adds some distractions. But um, in the the first the first week of this, I was working from home, and Julie was working at work. Yeah. Um, and on top of the distractions of having the kids around, I also had the worry of there's people oh. coming into Julie's office and coughing all the time, and yeah. you know what's what's going to happen there. <coughs> so, um, after uh, a little bit of that, she ended up taking some uh, time off. And when the time off ran out, uh, she went back to work for one day and they said, uh, that she was going to be laid off. Um, and I kind of thought, well, that's probably good. I, I, I think I prefer that. Um, so, um, yeah. we can, we can deal with that much more easily than we can deal with somebody bringing home a dangerous virus. So sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, that, that part has been a comfort and, um, uh, also just, uh, uh, the very fact that she's here, um, gives me someone else to deal with the kids while I'm at work, uh, yeah. throughout the day. Uh, it, uh, makes a pretty big difference because the kids aren't always coming to the same place for, can I have a drink? Can I, have, can, you know, <laughs> I'm bored, um, yeah. you know look at this <laughs> hey, what you, think you had a work uh, spreadsheet <laughs> for yeah exactly so is there um you know we've it kind of that kind of leads back into the encouraging people with the rocks and stuff uh, just to kind of come to the close here is there anything that you want to add uh, to some of the things we've talked about or just you know as one of the leaders at our church is there anything you'd like to say uh yeah um so I, I think that um, uh, everybody watching, uh, first of all, if you're if you're watching and you are one of the people who needed some encouragement, I'm hoping that that it comes your way. Um, mm -hmm. I uh, I want you to know that there are people who are thinking of you. Um, you know, they can't come visit you right now, but uh, there there are people who are thinking of you that love you. Um, and, uh, I just, I hope you don't feel, uh, alone. Uh, but if you do, um, know that, uh, there are people that, that would love to be spending time with you right now if they could, and yeah. that God is, is with you. Um, you know, when, uh, when, when God rescued, uh, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego from the furnace, he yeah. stood in the fire. Um, that was always the detail of that story that it didn't mm -hmm. always get people focus on the fact that they didn't die in there. But I, the, the part that always stuck in my mind was that um, he was standing inside the fire with them. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really symbolic to me that, you know, when you're going through the, you know, it's hard to find a worse part of your life than getting thrown into a fire. Um, <laughs> so when you're in the worst part of your life, Jesus is standing there with you yeah. and whatever hits you, hits him. Uh, it, mm. it really does work that way. Mm. So uh, you're, you're not alone. Um, and I, uh, I hope that everyone can just kind of find a way to show somebody that yeah. um, the, there's going to be a lot of people. Um, I think I had, I had uh, mentioned in a different Facebook post, I think that the, the next, the next medical shortage is going to be antidepressants. And I, I really, I mean it because uh, yeah. it's really tough for people. I was just uh, listening to um, an interview with Dr. Phil earlier today, talking about uh, the anxiety and depression and loneliness that people are feeling and, and what the lasting impacts of that are going to be. Um, and right now it's, it's easy to imagine those things right now, six months from now, it might be hard to pick up on the fact that people are la are suffering yeah. lasting effects, and um, you know, six months ago, it was hard to pick up on what people might be going through. Um, so <laughs> six months ago, we were about the Australian fire, thinking that's the worst thing that could ever happen in twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, and here we are. Um, so I, I I hope that the lasting lesson that I take away. 
um, is, uh, and it, it, it's, I don't know what future Brad looks like and, and how, uh, uh, if, if he'll be any more thoughtful than the, <laughs> than the Brad of six months ago, but, um, just the idea that, uh, the, the people that we deal with on a daily basis, we have no idea what's going on inside their own mind yeah. and, um, whether or not they're okay. We don't know, um, if something has affected them in a way that's not expected. And uh, our city has had such a problem uh, with yeah. mental health um, that we've got signs on the uh, reversing falls bridge, begging people not to jump off. Um, so trying to stay uh, a little more sensitive to the fact that uh, uh, everybody could use a kind word here and there, everybody could use a gesture uh, to show that they're being thought of and that they're not alone. So I'm really hoping um, that that continues, uh, not just in, in myself and my family, but uh, in the, the wider community. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Well, Brad, <laughs> well, can I ask you if you would mind having a word of prayer for us, those who are listening in? Uh, the church community, or just our community, anyone listening, who knows where they're listening from, but just um, a prayer of encouragement. That'd be fantastic if you'd mind doing that for us. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you so much for this opportunity um, that we have to um, uh, have a little chat and, and uh, uh, talk to each other about your about your business, about what you're getting done in our city. And Lord, I just pray uh, that what you're getting done in our city, um, our goals that, that we can see and get on board with. Uh, Father, I want to pray for anybody who is feeling stressed out, who is feeling alone, who's feeling depressed, who's feeling cooped up, who's feeling stir crazy, um, that you would put your hand on them, uh, that you would stand beside them in the fire that you would be uh, the rock beneath their feet that they need to uh, make them feel like their life is not out of control, that it is in your control. Um, no matter how it looks from the outside, <clears throat> it is in your control. Um, Father, I just um, uh, pray that you be with our church through this unusual time. Um, help us find ways to carry out our mission uh, despite the obstacles in our way. I just want to thank you um, for our pastor who has been so energized by the obstacles. Um, mm. And uh, I just pray that you continue to encourage him and uh, anyone else in leadership to, uh, to just continue moving forward in a time when it feels like everything has stopped. Um, mm -hmm. We love you, Lord, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Brad, thank you so much for sharing from your heart and from, uh, for the acts of kindness that you're doing, or the acts of random kindness, or <laughs> arc in that famous Steve Carell movie. Yeah. Um, just want to remind people that are watching here today that uh, every Thursday at 2 o'clock we post one of these interviews. Uh, every Tuesday at 2 o'clock, we have an in-depth Bible study. Every Sunday morning at 10.30, we post a service. And uh, Friday nights at 7 o'clock, we have a Facebook Live prayer event. And uh, we're just thankful for those who are able to participate and hope that you were encouraged today. Love you all. Thank you again, Brad. And have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.